Hi everyone, Art Sherwood here, and I'm back for Chapter 3, Interpretations to Strategic Plan. Chapter 3 fits into the entire ends-to-ends -ends process right here, where interpretations are taken to the strategic planning, and ultimately strategic planning then goes on to creating action plans uh, and reporting out the results of the ends. An overview of the chapter. Linking interpretations to the multi-year strategic plan. We'll touch on what the practical challenge is for you as you try to make this happen. We'll talk about how the bottom line of ends becomes the top line of the strategic plan. And ultimately, we'll talk about the strategic logic of the business, how it connects to ends, and how we can take it ends out for everyone. So let's think about the practical challenge. How do I link my ends to my strategic planning? The idea is that the interpretations provide the linking mechanism to start out your strategic planning process. And this is what is meant by the bottom line of the ends interpretation becomes the top line of the strategic plan, where the things that you've said and the interpretations you've made become the starting place for the rest of the strategic planning process. So let's take a look at a couple examples. What do you have in the interpretation? interpretation. Well, what you're trying to accomplish is what you're trying to achieve, and you're trying to say, here are my operational definitions or my measures of success. This then can go to uh, linking to the strategic plan through strategic objectives, which are what you're trying to achieve in your business at a certain point in the future tied to a specific amount of success that's measurable. So we've got the interpretations linking to the some of the first parts of your strategic planning uh, document. So here's an example of a Midwest co-op. Here's the end. Employees of the co-op have a positive work experience. The interpretation from this general manager is employees of the co-op are an integral part of the community and their experience of the co-op should be positive as well. Operational definitions. Our indicators of success, success will be scores on the employee satisfaction survey and employee turnover rate. So he gone ahead and interpreted this end and created the operational definitions. So how does this link to his ultimate strategic plan? Here are the strategic objectives that he's put into place. By 2014, we will develop an amazing staff. The co-op implements open book management in a quarterly and annual bonus plan. All measurable. The co-op ranks in the top quartile compared to other co-ops in the majority of the measures of the employee satisfaction survey. Again, uh, tied to a specific time and a specific amount. And finally, the co-op will keep and maintain less than 30% turnover rate. These become the strategic objectives for this particular part of the strategic plan. Let's take another look at uh, an example. Here's one on the West Coast, done in a bit different way, but a similar sort of idea. The people of the metro area will have a thriving, sustainable, cooperative business. So what this general manager did was define thriving. Consistently generating profits to further the end, uh, achievement of the ends, sustained plan growth, profits reinvested into improvements and in growth of the business. So you'll see this bold part is one that becomes uh, a primary piece of the uh, objectives for this particular period in the strategic plan. Then uh, she went on to define sustainable and ultimately cooperative business. There were additional interpretations that were included in this that became part of the strategic plan. The co-op consistently generates a profit in order to further the achievement of the end. So here, um, there's an explanation in the way she's thinking about this particular interpretation of the ends. Profits are what make it possible to support local producers and the regional food system, expand on services to customers and owners, invest in improvements, and so on. As you can see, what she's doing is sharing her thinking about uh, profitability and how it relates um, from this end. And she does this uh, with several other components which are also worth reading through. So how did this ultimately connect to strategic objectives? So the end that we're focused on here in terms of this example is the people of the metro area will have a thriving sustainable cooperative business. The interpretation of consistently generating profit in order to further the achievement of the ends, and the definition of the measures will be net income, sales growth, marketing expense, direct store expenses. This interpretation was then converted to a strategic objective 
tied to a particular time period. Between now and 2015, you'll have consistent profitability. Net income of 1% to 3% sales each year. Increased consistent margin to reach 39% end of year three. Sales growth of 25% over three years. Marketing expense increases 1% to 3% of sales by year three. And finally, direct store expenses in the range of 28 to 29.75% of sales. As you can see, what's been done is that interpretation becomes the top line of the strategic uh, plan. Not only does this happen on each of the different components, but there's a strategic logic in this model. Take a look at what we have here. Um, we would like to be able to communicate to everyone the strategy and the logic of how it all works in one sheet. And here's an example of how one person has done it at uh, one of our cooperatives. This picture is a piece that is used on a single sheet of uh, paper that talks about the overall theme of connection to community. And if you start in the lower left-hand corner, what this general manager and leadership team has said that staff awesomeness, or having an amazing staff, multi-store effectiveness, starts leading to being a leading provider of local and sustainable products and services and being a leader in promoting a vibrant regional food system. Each of these two things leads to strong market growth and recognition of value, which finally leads to a thriving, sustainable business. Some of this should sound familiar. There's the strategic logic and cause and effect that's going from the lower left to the upper right. Many of these pieces originated in the ends. The ends matter to strategy. Thriving and sustainable business was one of the ends. Being a leader in promoting vibrant regional food system, one of the ends. Leading provider of local and sustainable products and services, one of the ends. And these two pieces are the key differentiating factors for this cooperative in its competitive marketplace. And finally, staff awesomeness uh, was a key component uh, of what ultimately um, became a, a foundational cause for the other effects as the chart goes up to the right. The thing here with the theme of connection to community becomes the big purpose of this cooperative. All of these different boxes ultimately lead to a strong co connection to community and we want to make sure that everyone understands this. We exist this particular co-op is saying we exist in order to connect to the community, to build stronger community, and that is the difference, the cooperative difference uh, for us and why co-ops matter. And again, this all came from an interpretation of the ends. The ends was driving the strategy. So what we've done here in Chapter 3 is we've talked about how interpretation leads to uh, strategic planning. And the next chapter, we'll talk about how strategic planning then connects to planning at the operational level, making things happen, checking to see how you're doing, and finally adjusting as needed.